So I finished both of the quilting aspects of the baby quilts, the one for the little girl and the one for the little boy. Uh, Miss Emery has got Miss Bunny, and then Master Caden has Mr. Fox and all the little woodland friends. The back is, I don't know, it's just scrumptious, it's so soft, I just love it. So now we want to make our binding. And so here's our material, and what we're going to do is cut it at two and a half inches. Now it doesn't have to be two and a half inches, it just depends on what size you want your binding to be. Um, I just choose two and a half, I've done several of those and they do just fine. You want enough strips so that once they're sewn together, they're going to go around the quilt and you have just a little bit extra there also. Okay, so we don't want to forget we're going to have these little selvage ends and we want to cut those off. I cut a little extra. So we have one of our strips right side up. We're going to take a second piece and we're going to put right sides together. So we're making basically an L and you're going to put these sides even together and then we're going to sew from this corner to this corner okay right down here and you may wonder well how can I see where that's at one of the things you can do is just set this in just a little bit you can pin it right here just to keep it from sliding around take a ruler and you know you can see the one corner and now you can actually see where the other corner is at you're going to draw your line, a light line right there. And then all you have to do is position it correctly. And so now it's accurate. Now some people feel very confident and they do that without any of this, but not I. And if you're wondering like, oh, did I, did I go the right direction? All you have to do is take something, you know, you can take a ruler, you can actually use your finger, but all you'd have to do is go along that line pull it back like that and if it's continuous well then you've done it correctly now once we sew this from here to here we're going to use the scissors and trim off a quarter inch and that's going to cut out a lot of bulk it's uh, sometimes more preferable people do this different ways but diagonally it just seems like it takes out a little more bulk than if you were to just a butt, you know, two ends together. So if you want, you can just go ahead and do this one and then continue um, not stopping to trim things up. But you can just go ahead with this piece and then get your next piece and do the same thing until you get the desired length, the, uh, the amount that goes around the quilt. So you want to do the amount that goes around the, qu the quilt plus a little more because we're going to overlap the amount of the width of this. Now, does that seem like who came up with that? I have no idea who came up with it, but they're probably a math whiz. That's great, but uh, we're just going to cross one bridge at a time. I'm just saying. So now it's time to move on to this one. And I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, we're going to secure our stitch and just follow that line down to the other corner. So I've got my next one pinned. We'll go through and cut all the threads here momentarily. Okay, just double check and make sure you got your edges straight. Every, everything's evening up correctly because it can scooch on you, you know, like twist a little bit, just the weight of the material itself, if say, you know, it's hanging down, which that's exactly what this is doing. It's sort of started to twist a little bit. So you can put, ro ro Rorge, drop that pin. Here's one. So you can put a pin in there just to help hold it in place where you're working with it. So when you get to where the point where you have sewn from one corner to the other corner, we're going to go through and we're going to 
trim this back to about a quarter inch and so all that bulk will be gone and that way we can open and we have a continuous uh, piece of binding. So that's what we're going to do next. You can go ahead and get all your, trim all your little wild thread that's hanging out there. So just approximately a fourth of an inch. So it's going to look something like that. And then we'll take it to um, the ironing board and we'll iron that out. Okay, for this next part, when it comes to the seams, you can either open them up or press them to one side. On these, I just, uh, normally I just press it to one side. Sometimes it's just my preference not to have seam, especially if it stretches the material a little bit. Some people swear by it and starch. But we're not going to get all technical now on this one. You can go ahead and hit some of these extra little places that need to be pressed out. So the next step is to take our fabric, fold it, and then press it all along the length of it. Okay, so now this is the back side of the quilt, and I've went ahead and pressed the binding in half, and we're going to put the raw edges against this raw edge at the back of the quilt. And I brought it about a third of the way down. Uh, you don't have to do that, but that's where I just prefer to start. And then I'm going to meet you at the sewing machine, and when we get a quarter inch to this edge, we'll go from there and do our next step. So now we have this in the machine ready to sew and we're going to leave an end out about eight inches approximately. So we're going to start right here and go to the corner. Okay, I've got to the corner here and I just took a pin and I marked a fourth of an inch from this edge right here. And all we're going to do is, I'm actually using the hand wheel to do this, Take a couple forward, just right there. Okay, and then you can back stitch uh, on this machine or you can just do a secure stitch. That's a little round donut hole there. And it's just gonna go straight up and down. Okay. And then you're gonna take it out. I wanna mention something else. If you're using uh, the Brother SE 1900 machine and you're using this walking foot, uh, when the needle is centered, like when you're actually doing the quilting part and you want to see where you're going and so you move this position over, um, if you're wanting a fourth of an inch, say, as you're coming around these edges, just remember you want this to default back over to the left because this quarter inch, um, you'll see it on your machine, it's there for a guide. Um, if you've centered the needle, that will not be a fourth of an inch. I'm, I'm just going to guess. I'd say it's a, an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now I have rotated my quilt. And as you can see here, what we're going to do is flip this binding away from us up at the top. And we're going to make a mitered corner here, a 90 degree corner. And you can actually just sort of finger press that. And then we're going to now, so it's up this way. Here's your mitered corner. And now we're going to flip it back down. And we're going to have this edge and this edge even. And we want all this lined up nice. And what we're going to do is then start sewing. right here. So we catch everything. And let's start right here at this fourth inch. Now it's pretty bulky. Now we have the binding completed around the perimeter of the quilt. Now here is where we started. This is the, the tail, it was about six inches. And now we've come around this edge and here's 
the remaining piece. So I came down here uh, approximately, I don't know, eight to nine inches, and so we've got this gap. Okay, so you can use whatever ruler you want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tail or this end and we're going to go right up and meet where we started right here. And we're going to bring it about so. Okay, now, so we've met right up with it. And whatever width your binding is, so let's open this up, and I know mine is two and a half inches. Okay, so it's two and a half inches. So that's how much we want to cut back this way. So two and a half inches. Now, sometimes uh, fabrics have a lot of give to them, so you can go slightly under that's up to you. You don't have to do that. So about two and a half, uh, for me, since mine is two and a half, I would cut it at two and a half or maybe a smidge under it. And I'm going to go just barely under two and a half. Uh, there's a lot of play in this material. So I'm, I'm safe there. So I'm going to cut that. And next, I'm going to show you how to join these two pieces. Okay, so we're going to take the binding here on the left. We're going to open it up, and it's just going to be like when we did the binding so far. We opened it up, so you've got your right side up uh, over here on the left. This one, you've got right sides together, so you're going to have the wrong side facing you on the right. And you're going to put your corners together just like that. This material really frays. I'm hoping that you're catching that. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is pin this and then draw my mark. So we're going to draw a mark from this corner to that corner right there. And then we're going to sew and we're going to trim. Okay, so we're going to now pin this where it fits perfectly between those areas where we started and where we ended. So here's the piece that we just put together. Okay, now we're just going to pin and sew. Okay, so now we have our binding attached to the back. We've done machine sewing for that. And now if you want, this is totally up to you, you can actually give this a little press. Makes it nice and neat. And then what we're going to do is flip it, flip this binding to the front, just like that. And now I hand stitch this, generally speaking, and I'll just show you how I do it. There's many ways to do it. It's all just preference. And really, just as long as it looks nice. That's what really matters. Now, some people will machine stitch that, and uh, when I do a quilt like that, I'll show you that, but uh, on this one, I'm going to be doing hand stitching, and it's a baby quilt. It really doesn't take that long, and it looks great. It looks very professional. really hadn't thought about this, but I would say if it was a young person and old enough to start learning to sew, and the parents is okay with it, just even threading a needle. Um, I learned this as a kid. Just take the eye of the needle there, the end of your thread, insert the thread through the eye, pull it through, and now as you can see I've, I've doubled the thread and I'm going to pull it all the way down, these two pieces of thread, till the ends are even. And I know that there's fancy ways of tying a knot. Um, I learned this as a child. It's just simple and straightforward. So you're just going to even the two ends. Okay. Make your little circle, like so. Put your ends through. 
bring your little knot down so you'll feel it and you'll see it the little knot and then you're just going to do the same thing and make a little double knot could because sometimes a single knot can actually go through the material sometimes it can and sometimes it can't so there I just doubled the little knot you want the little tail there with the knot to come be hidden back behind here before I do that though I was going to show you uh, you can use wonder clips to hold this in place these little wonder clips if you don't have those you can use the needle something I do is sometimes I'll, I'll clip that down and then sometimes I don't because I can hold to the back of uh, the material and I can feel where this is at and I can feel where this is at so I pretty much know that this is you know straight and even but now the way I do it to get started some people will just do uh, do this come straight into here and then sort of tuck that little tail that little thread uh, back in there um, I actually come from the other direction when I start I want to end up in the same spot I just usually go from underneath and then go into that little crease right there okay into that crease I'm going to pull that through just sort of hold on to the thread here to keep it from tangling and that way the tail is sort of already tucked up in there okay so now we've got the thread right here coming through the binding so we're going to go right underneath the binding and we're going to catch that little that little edge right there and then we're going to do the same thing we're just going to keep just sort of a slip stitch I would imagine most people call it so you can go directly underneath where it is in the binding go through the little pick up underneath the quilting and then just parallel to that and that's what we're going to keep doing until we get to the corner like I said now because it's doubled I will kind of take my hand in the thread sort of keep it from um, twisting so much and wanting to cause a knot but a lot of people just put one piece of thread through the uh, through the needle and so you have a knot in one end of just that one piece of thread and then you're going to have your little looped over piece of thread hanging through here um, I don't know it's just me double the strength I guess is what is in my mind if one gives if one, <laughs> if one gives you have the other one so yeah so that's basically what we're doing right here just doing that straight down and just a small ways up we're going to do that till we get to the corner so let's say that you're getting close to the end of your thread and you're needing to uh, knot this off what I do is I will bring it up through my binding hold my thread down and insert it just like I'm going to make my next stitch uh, except instead of going here I just raise that just a little bit and I take a little stitch like that okay, now I'm going to pull, put my binding back down snug it just a little bit and then I'm going to raise this back up my binding okay, gently and then what I'm going to do is then take my needle and I'm going to basically bury the end of the thread and then I'm going to I'm, I'm actually going to back sort of back stitch sort of secure it just a little bit like so and then take my scissors cut that and then when I go back rethread my needle and go back what I will do is insert my uh, new thread right where my last one was at that way it gives that a little strength and then the end is buried up in here okay, so we've got close to the corner and we're going to miter it so we're going to press that material down 
then we're going to bring this material in so that these two these two little corners match mitered just like oh you know like picture frames put a little clip there if you like just to hold it still and I'm going to do my stitch like normal up till I get to it and it actually wouldn't hurt to maybe take two two little stitches right there that little corner so there's one and I'm going to take one more make sure I'm getting slipping all over the place there we go like so now to see that little flap right there you can go from where you're at and then go all the way up to the end right there we go right there okay and then what we're going to do is basically just the way we've been doing like a sort of a little slip stitch you can do that right down from here to here so let's see let's try to get that little edge there you go and that way it keeps that little gap from being open go down and catch this next one about caught my thumb there okay. press and then up to the very corner where we were at okay, now you can go into the corner and then continue on your way so now that right in here is all flat so we're just going to go right here in the corner I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back out and we're just securing this in this corner and on we go